good evening to everyone and welcome to today's session <clears throat> we welcome our online friends dr akshara chandan amrit mahesh and the students from vizag tirupati etc physiology for the entrance is always interesting and also uh, there are totally 52 topics in physiology if it is state md entrance there are six questions do we need to read entire 52 topics in physiology is a million dollar question but if it is neat pg or a all india md entrance yes there are about 20 questions which are ultimately going to come from this 56 topics but a strong hold on physiology is a basis for pharmacology which ultimately becomes a basis for general medicine so there is a reason never anybody is uh, has suffered a loss having had uh, mastered all these 50 plus topics in physiology in the next 10 days we are going to that is in two weeks we are going to finish physiology <clears throat> maybe we will start the class a little early from tomorrow um the main topics i think you are all having the topic list with you <clears throat> uh is the voice clear just find out for all the online students is the voice loud and clear yeah please check please punch uh, whether the voice is clear <clears throat> yeah so unlike a traditional way of starting from cell membrane towards the neurophysiology as uh, dictated by the ganong we'll try to go from most commonly asked topics towards uh, the least commonly asked topics to start with we have nephron physiology is uh, one of the most commonly asked question nearly 95 questions have come in the past 15 years of all india aims pgi totally 75 papers were analyzed so let's master the nephron physiology first so the kidneys are the endocrine organs which produce the renin erythropoietin and also 125 dihydroxy vitamin d3 because they have one alpha hydroxylase which will convert 25 vitamin d into 125 dihydroxy vitamin d is one of the most important function of the kidneys the blood from the renal arterioles is basically delivered to the glomeruli and uh, how much of the cardiac output goes to the kidney the most important million dollar question favorite mcq of the examiner one fifth of the cardiac output typically will be reaching which is the highest tissue specific blood flow compared to any other organ is what the kidney is having now ultimately how much amount of a given substance is excreted from the body what is a deciding factor it is the amount which is filtered at the level of the glomerulus and the amount which is being reabsorbed and the amount which is being secreted into the tubules it is the ultimate end product of these three parameters will decide how much is ultimately excreted into the urine now if you look at the renal anatomy kidney is a retroperitoneal organ as all of you know very well it is a multi lobed structure embryologically the way it grows it has a cardex and medulla and the basic functional unit is nephron and nephron is having a long thin tubule that is closed at one end and uh, what is baumann's capsule typically that capillaries are all surrounded by the baumann's capsule those high pressure capillary network which is called the glomerulus is surrounded by baumann's capsule so along with this baumann's capsule and that glomerulus capillaries of network 
it constitutes a filtration unit in which the glomerular filtrate is typically formed. Now let's have a look. Typically this is called as Bowman's capsule. And this is the glomerular capillary. Afferent arteriole is bringing the blood and there is a filtration which is happening and whatever that is not yet filtered typically enters into the efferent arteriole. Now if you look at uh, the glomerular blood flow, the um, efferent and afferent arterioles are in a continuous dynamic equilibrium of pressure and the pressure difference between the two is one of the most important determining factor for the amount of the glomerular filtration which is happening as all of you know very well. Then if you look at the Bowman's capsule, there are two aspects of the Bowman's capsule. It is a capsule. It has one parietal epithelium and it has one visceral epithelium. Right? So, what is the most important structure in the visceral epithelium, doctor? Podocytes. Whereas in the parietal epithelium, why will you remember it in uh, pathology? We say crescentic glomerulonephritis, no? Which leads to rapidly progressive renal failure. It is the proliferation of this parietal epithelial glomerular cells is responsible for the formation of the crescent. After all, what is a crescent? Crescent is highly proliferated multiples of parietal epithelial cells will lead to the formation of a crescent. Then what are the importance of podocytes? You all know HIV nephropathy. What is the most important cell which is injured in the HIV nephropathy? It is the loss of these podocytes. It is the main pathology in the case of the HIV nephropathy. Now, doctor, once the glomerulus filters the plasma into the proximal convoluted tubule, when through the tubular fluid it is passing, it undergoes both reabsorption and secretion. And uh, from the interstitium into the tubular fluid, when any substance is uh, entering, then you call it as secretion, like potassium is secreted. From the tubular lumen, out of the tubular lumen into the interstitium, whenever the substance moves, as what happens for the sodium, potassium, bicarbonate, glucose, everything, you call it as reabsorption. Now, if you look at the nephron, every nephron has its own blood flow through two arterioles and two capillaries. There are two capillary systems which are existent in the nephron. One capillary system is the glomerulus capillary system. It is a very high pressure zone and that is basically responsible for the filtration and the, that leads to the formation of the fluid in the tubules. The second capillary system is the peritubular capillary system. Where is this located? From the afferent arteriole into the efferent arteriole when the blood passes, ultimately it enters into this peritubular capillary system. It is typically distributed on the sides of the tubule. Mainly what is the purpose of this peritubular capillary system? From the tubule, whenever any substance is reabsorbed into the interstitium, from the interstitium, this peritubular capillary system will take over that substance. So, the main function of the peritubular capillary system is, it favors the reabsorption, whereas the glomerular capillary system favors the filtration is what you have to ultimately remember. Now, if you look at the nephrons, one of the favorite MCQ in the exam, there are two types of nephrons, cortical and juxtamedullary. Between the two, which is most abundant, 85% of nephrons are typically cortically located nephrons is what need to be remembered. So, how do you recognize a cortical nephron, doctor? There is a short loop of Henle with the peritubular capillaries. It is a typical structure of cortical nephron. 
whereas the less common juxtamedullary nephron it has a long loop of henle and it has got the vasa recti what are vasa recti they are those long narrow capillary tubules that have got a great resistance to the blood flow whenever the blood passes through the vasa recti it passes very sluggishly so vasa recti are the part of the juxtamedullary nephron system whereas the other type is more more abundant is the cortical nephron system is what need to be remembered so we have this retroperitoneal organ which is the kidney kidney has one cortex it has got a medulla it has got a pyramid and a renal pelvis and the ureter you all know very well then this is a very important uh, thing that we are talking about here you are having uh, a renal artery afferent arteriole which ultimately is forming a glomerular capillaries which are coming out in the form of efferent arteriole and after coming out they end up into the juxta glomerular capillaries uh, which are typically surrounding uh, the tubules peritubular capillaries and uh, they are the ones which will lead to ultimate reabsorption is what need to be remembered so in summary we have a juxtamedullary nephron which is a long looped nephron which is very important for maintaining the osmotic uh, gradient between the tubule and the interstitium and the peritubular capillary where vasa recta are the main component of it you have a cortical nephron which is the most abundant type and it is the one which is responsible which has got a lot of peritubular capillary network surrounding it so this is once more to summarize that uh, we have a lumen of a glomerulonephric capillary and uh, we have uh, a endothelial cell porosides filtration slit now what is the importance of this filtration slit typically it has got anionic charges lining it and any loss of this anionic charges as what happens in diabetic nephropathy etc will lead to loss of the anionic proteins into the urine fundamentally so uh, the anionic charges are most important component of the filtration slit now whenever the blood enters into the afferent arteriole it enters into capillary there it gets filtered and uh, some of it enters into proximal tubule now whatever the blood which is leaving the glomerulus after filtration is over uh what does it basically contain it contains a fluid which is rich in proteins how is the tubular fluid it contains a fluid which is poor in proteins because proteins are basically prevented from getting filtered across the uh, glomerulus glomerular capillary so the renal tubule ultimately has got a proximal convoluted tubule a loop of henle a distal convoluted tubule and ultimately a collecting duct where the urine is collected into the renal pelvis so let us once more review what all that we have seen we have an afferent arteriole and one efferent arteriole and this is a typical glomerulus where the filtration is happening now doctor one fifth of cardiac output is reaching kidney right how much of that is filtered into the glomerulus ultimately 20% of the plasma which is entering into the glomerulus is only filtered one fifth and 80% of the plasma that enters the glomerulus is not filtered and it leaves through the efferent arteriole into the peritubular capillary and ultimately into the venous system of the body that is a renal vein so this is a typical structure where only 1/5 of the plasma ultimately get filtered is the point of interest here so how is the blood flow doctor the blood flow is from the glomerular capillaries into the efferent arteriole into the peritubular capillaries into the venous blood there is a filtrate pathway 
it enters into Bowman's capsule, into proximal tubule, into loop of Henle, into the distal tubule, into the collecting duct, into ultimately urine. And uh, while it is passing, there is either a tubular reabsorption or tubular secretion. Once more, an exchange between the peritubular capillaries and the tubule, tubular fluid. That's all. Now, let's talk about filtration. What decides filtration? How much amount of the uh, fluid is being filtered from the plasma into the Bowman's capsule? Blood pressure is a very important determinant of the glomerular capillary dynamics. And the plasma colloid osmotic pressure and the hydrostatic pressure, these are all the determinants which will ultimately decide the filtration pressure. So, whenever the arterial blood pressure increases, that will increase the blood flow into the glomerulus and that will increase the glomerular capillary blood pressure and that in turn will cause an increased filtration pressure which will increase the glomerular filtration rate, increase GFR. 